they, um, they told me this function was going to be at CBGB's this year. Weed out some of the posers, you know. Um, Eddie Vedder, wherever you are, you are a genius. You know, the, um, the Ramon songs may be two minutes long, but that speech was not. It was actually, um, it was actually a very short speech, just spoken very slowly, that one. Mo, what's up, Mo? No one told me Mo was going to be here. Anyway, um, boy, am I honored just to, uh, you know, be mentioned in the same breath um, of the talking heads, that is. You know, there are major events that happen in one's lifetime, um, turning points um, that are so profound that you just, you remember exactly where you were at that moment that that happened. Um, you know, some sad, some, some happy, like, for those of you old enough, I'm, I'm sure you remember exactly where you were when, uh, when JFK was shot, when Martin Luther King was shot, when John Lennon was shot. You remember exactly where you were and how you felt. Um, you remember where you were when uh, Neil Armstrong walked on the moon. It's like you in your bedroom, you know, with your mom or whatever. And, um, you know, you remember uh, where you were when you lost your virginity. You remember exactly where you were. Girls, you remember exactly where you were the first time you got your period. You remember that moment and where you were. And um, for me, I remember the exact place that I was, the exact moment that it happened that I heard the talking heads for the first time. And um, you know, that's an incredible indication of, of what a beautiful influence um, they would have on my life because there's not too many things I can say that about. And um, I was in the living room of, of Dondi Bastone's house. I was 15, it was 1977. And uh, the song that he put on was Psycho Killer and I absolutely freaked out. And, um, you know, I made him play that song over and over and over again because um, it was like nothing else I'd ever heard and it made me feel like nothing else I'd ever felt. And uh, some very strange things happened to me when I heard the talking heads. Um, for one thing, I felt smart. I'm serious. I, I listened to talking heads and it made me feel smart and that was a pretty good feeling. You know, I felt a lot of things from music before, but I never felt, you know, particularly smart, and, uh, and I like that. Um, talking Heads also made me want to dance like a maniac, which I love, because that um, also changed my life, you know. There is nothing more meaningful to me than, like, music and dancing, you know, it's as important to me as my mother and my best friends. Um, you know, another thing that happened to me when I started listening to Talking Heads is I wanted to have sex with a lot of librarians. And, uh, and other music hadn't made me feel like that either. So I'm definitely making a bond with the talking heads at this point. You know, um, it was, it's been said before, it was a, a truly beautiful time in, uh, in music. Um, you know, they also completely expanded upon the definition of what it was to be a, a cool rock and roll band. There was all kinds of different cool, but, um, you know, this was a new one. You had your, uh, you know, your kind of standard... Um, rock and roll posturing cool of Aerosmith, let's say, you know, they had their own kind of cool and, you know, then you had this, this beautifully aggressive cool of, of punk rock that was exploding, like, uh, you know, Sex Pistols and Ramones, very aggressive cool. And um, you, had, uh, you had the ultra cool of, of P-Funk, you know, that was the kind of cool that you could have felt. And suddenly there's this whole new cool, uh, like a smart cool, um, you know, with an incredibly beautiful girl in the band you know, which was a, a pretty beautiful concept to me at the time. It was like, you know, I was familiar with girls, you know, singing in the back and everything, but this girl was actually in the band, and, you know, they rocked the fuck out as a four-piece, and then they made this very uh, graceful transition to um, their orchestral sound, you know, this orchestral funk. And, um, you know, they, they taught me a lot to Talking Heads. I didn't realize it at the time, but I was learning from them, and it was making me want to develop my character. Uh, they taught me that music could be inspired by, by visual arts. Um, I had never felt that before. And, uh, and all these things were happening to me, and I didn't realize it. Um, you know, I have to thank Brian Eno as well, um, along with a few other people that were involved with Talking Heads, like Burning Worrell and uh, Adrian Ballou and, and Robert Fripp and Stephen Scales. Um, you know, these people were all... Uh, guiding me into what, you know, I would later want to do with, with my life. Um, the most important thing 
that I can possibly express besides my incredible gratitude to the talking heads um, for existing is that I, I just want them to know, I know they haven't been together for a while, you know, they haven't played for 18 years and, and, and time moves on and you become occupied with what you're creating in the present, but more than anything, I really, really, really want the talking heads to know um, what an infinitely beautiful impact they have had on this world. Um, you know, to me, what's up, Bernie? Um, you know, to me, they, they have had the most beautiful impact that, that, that a band could ever have on the world. And um, I really, really want them to know that, that they left this world a better place. You know, as a, as a band, they did things, you know, as beautiful and meaningful as any Nobel scientist or a saint or uh, any form of God that we believe in. You know, the Talking Heads did that for me. And I hope they realize that. And I hope they'll always know, you know, in this lifetime what they meant to me and to the rest of the world. So, um, Talking Heads, get the hell up here, please. I start, it'll never end, and it's well past my bedtime. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Well, we... We want to start where we began, by thanking Hilly Crystal. We'd like to invite Hilly up here. Hilly is the reason that we're here, that the Ramones are here, that Blondie are here. He kept us alive. He fed us. And he supported us in every way possible. He told us we needed to expand our sound, get a little more interesting. And uh, he was pretty amazing. And he, he taught us a lot about ethics about how to treat people. Hilly. Thank you. And then, of course, we'd like to thank the next person in chronological order. That would be Seymour Stein. <laughs> Seymour Stein is like our other godfather. He found us and we wouldn't sign. We just said, sorry, we can't do that. We're not ready. And he was willing to wait. And, uh, <laughs> but how long can you wait? <laughs> and Seymour stuck with us. He stuck his neck out for us and he left it out there. And he was fighting in our corner every inch of the way, even when there were accountants and lawyers telling him, this isn't happening. And uh, I'd like to remind everybody here, because people here obviously are people who like music even better than money or fame. And uh, I think it's very important if we're going to save our business, and it is a business, but it's an art, and if we're going to save it, We've got to remember to have a checks and balances. We've learned from Enron. We've learned from our federal government. We've learned that we have to have the accountants and the lawyers outside the house. And we need the support of our managers and our agents, because they tell the people in the label when the label is smart like Seymour was, and like Warner Brothers were in our day, they tell them how to do it. But smart people listen. And that would be our manager for 25 years, Gary Kerfurst. <laughs> Gary managed 
the Ramones for 22 years, but he managed us for 25 years. He managed the B-52s, he managed the Eurythmics, he managed countless live. He keeps on going and he doesn't quit. We also have to thank Chris Blackwell. We have to thank Frank Barcelona. He kind of invented along with everybody. We were a really great team, you know? We worked together on all of this stuff and we worked hard. And uh, of course we have to thank our parents and we have to thank our children for the sacrifices they made and for telling us to hang in there when the going got tough, for telling us that we had an obligation as artists to survive, that we had, even when we weren't popular, we had an obligation to keep making art for the future. It might not be timely now, but one day it'll be there even when we're gone. And. Uh, I have to confess that I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I'm really a large black man and therefore I have to thank God for all our blessings. We have to thank our fans because without them we'd be nowhere and we have to ask them to please buy our music. Sure, you can listen to it all you want on bootlegs, but please help us keep it going. We don't make money from selling records or from touring. We just make money from publishing. That's how we've survived. And so we, I guess we gotta thank ASCAP too. And uh, we have to thank all the people who, our crews, the people who were we babied them, and sometimes we didn't baby them enough. But they were amazing. They hung with us. They hung tough. And we have to thank all the artists who were there for us in our corner, starting with the Ramones. Talking Heads was my first band, and the first band we ever played with was the Ramones. Can you imagine? Blondie, Patti Smith, television. We thought we were rivals, but we knew we weren't really. That was just mainstream envy. So I'd like to hand this podium over to my comrades, whom I thank also, because I wouldn't be here without them. I'd like to thank the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for, for giving this band a happy ending. And I'd also like to thank, I'd also like to thank the music, san, oh, the music fans of New York City in particular. Thank you. You know, coming up out of New York, I think all of us were sort of cynical about things like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and award shows. It's like we didn't need things like this. And about a year ago, I was in my home, which is Milwaukee, where I grew up, and I was at a wedding. And I ran, I ran into someone who recognized me on the street who was with Rod Carew. And I go, damn, he's in, the, he's in the Baseball Hall of Fame. And I went, no, wait a moment. We have our own Hall of Fame. And I am very proud now to be inducted into something with just such incredible musicians. And thank you very much. And I'd like to, first of all, thank Tina, Chris, and David for 10 great years and for coming back after 18 years. And now that my kids and my wife can finally see us play live. Thank you. I'd like to thank Hilly again. Uh, when we started out, hey, does this thing move? No. No, it doesn't. 
No, no. Uh, I'd like to thank Hilly again. <laughs> Do not touch that. <laughs> but when we were starting out, uh, there really weren't clubs where bands could play their own material. And uh, poor Hilly wanted to have a, a kind of bluegrass band on the Bowery, a uh, bluegrass bar on the, on the Bowery, and have some other music as well. But that's really part of what the name is about. And uh, well, I guess. The road didn't go that way. The road took an, another turn. And uh, thanks to, I mean, <laughs> we'll thank him. He went, he went that direction and didn't mind. Anyway, it was just extraordinary, the fact that, just the fact that a few bars, a few clubs opened their doors and said, we're going to let you guys, who, anybody who comes in here who has something to say, has some original music, we're going to let you play. Bands came out of the woodwork. They were everywhere. They were coming from out of state. They were coming from all the neighborhoods of, uh, of New York. Nobody knew they were there. They, nobody knew that there were bands there. It's not like they were there hanging around waiting to play. They came out because there was somewhere to play. Anyway, it was, a, it was all, I, the, the fact that these clubs opened up here and in other places kind of made the mu brought the music into existence in many ways. I'd like to thank Jerry, Chris, and Tina, and Bernie, and Steve, and all the other musicians we've played with as well. I can. This is Bernie Worrell. Mr. Chris. To Mr. Chris Blackwell. I'll be seeing you later in a minute. Y'all better help get it together, else you fall apart more than we have. Peace and love. 